Hello Magnetic Queens and welcome to the Toned and Transformed podcast where we blend together beautifully fitness and faith to help you get your dream body, get a toned body and to help you gain self-confidence in Christ and grow spiritually. And today we're having the second part of misconceptions of fitness and faith and as I mentioned in the first part already it's really important for you to know about the misconceptions because those can hold you back and there are misconceptions and false beliefs that many people hold and that are holding them back from growing spiritually and from also getting their dream shape so there's so many points to talk about. I could talk about many other points, but I decided to make a two-part series out of this, and this is going to be part two. If you want to know about more misconceptions and you have more questions, send me a message and let me know, and I'll be happy to make more of those episodes. But for now, let's dive into part two of the misconceptions on fitness and faith. If you haven't watched the last episode, go watch it because this sets the foundation for what we're going to talk about now. So yeah, I'll say out, I would say let's get started. So we covered the first three points in the first part and this week we are continuing at point four, which is doing a little bit of everything and mixing things up. It's more like something that people do that it's not good, more than a misconception. And I'm talking here about fitness and faith. So when it comes to your faith and it want, when it comes to your fitness journey, a lot of people, they fail because they just do a little bit of everything. And in the end, um, there is this saying that says, too many cooks spoil the broth. So if you have too, if you listen to too many different things and you try too many different things, it will not work out and you will not get to your destination and you want to get to a destination. Therefore, you're going to need to take one path because if you try to follow different paths, you will just drive in circles and you will never get there. So let's start with fitness. So the um, biggest mistake that most people do is that they change their method every three weeks. They see a um, workout and they try out this workout. Then after three weeks, they see no results because they have not been consistent enough, of course. And they try the next thing. They listen to the other influencer. But then they hear on TikTok that you should be adding this thing and you should be avoiding this food and then you implement this and because this did not immediately work then you try the juice detox from the other influencer and then you order the protein powder from the other one and then you go and do the fat burning hit workout and so in the end you end up mixing different things and it's not only from your favorite influencers but I also know people who go to one trainer and then they switch to the other and then they search for another and another and they sw keep switching all the time. And um, this is why they're not succeeding. Of course, you have to be smart there. If you are with a trainer and you see that it's not working out, that the chemistry is not there, that the method does not do you well. And if it's rationable, of course, you should be changing. But do not change things every other week or every, yeah, every three weeks, every six weeks, because you need to stick to one method consistently for you to see if it works out for you or if it does not work out for you. And if you mix the things, this is the reason why you will be driving in circles all the time. So if you decide to go for one type um, of nutrition or way of eating, then stick to that and then follow that and then see the re uh, look of yeah look on the results take progress pictures with which most of you don't do so often we start a certain diet and we don't even measure our progress but we uh, see ourselves in the mirror and we think oh nothing is happening i have to do another uh, something else but often this is not true often you are progressing but you didn't document it so I know nobody likes to take progress pictures and I always will continue emphasizing that 
take your progress pictures because they will show you whether you're progressing or not. But don't expect uh, results in three weeks. Um, stay consistent with that and pick a method where you are consistent. And I know it can be hard if you're searching on the internet um, to know which method is the correct method, what will get you to your goal. I know the information out there is confusing. I'm also going to touch on that. Um, so it's really difficult and really the best thing you can do, my hard recommendation is to work with a coach. A coach where you know that it's a good coach, where you have talk to or why you have seen client transformations where you have talked to him where you feel like you have a trust because then you can trust him of course you can always ask why this and that method and if the coach is able to explain it to you then it's a good coach and then stick to that and stick to him and don't go listen to another tip on youtube because this will damage everything so if you really want to make to take the sure path pick a coach that you trust in and trust in him and you will see the results. But do not switch from one thing to another. Believe me, this will not work out. And with that, we're going to change to the faith topic. And the misconception that a lot of people have is that our religions are the same. Our religions are true. As long as you are a good person, then it doesn't matter which way you take. All will be good. And this is what I myself fought a little bit over a year ago. I remember I was fighting with my mom over that. I was saying, uh, telling her she's intolerant and that everything is true and that Buddha and Allah and the God in the Bible and the universe are all the same God and people just name him another way, but as long as they're good um, and as long as they have good principles, everything is good and um, this is just not true. I really changed my opinion big time it's not true it's not all the same god and again also here too many cooks spoil the broth and there's a lot of people they talk about being open and all are the same but no all religions all beliefs cannot be true because they do they do contradict each other for example, um, when we talk about salvation, because um, relig yeah, certain religions are about how you can be saved, and um, Christianity, what I believe in, what I believe is the truth, what I know is the truth, teaches that salvation happens through faith in Jesus Christ who died for our sins. He came down to earth, was crucified, died for our sins, and Therefore, we are saved. Then Islam emphasizes that salvation comes through good deeds and following certain laws. That's how they are being saved. And then Hinduism, for example, teaches about the reincarnation and about karma. And uh, for example, they teach that um, you have karma. Like if you live a good life now, you will be born as, I don't know, a king or a famous person. But if you live a bad life, you do bad things, that you will be born as a slave, for example. This is what Hinduism teaches. So those are very, very different things they contra that contradict each other. And they cannot all be true. There can only be one truth. And one of the big things in that is for example Christianity teaches that Jesus is the son of God and the savior of the world this says it says in the bible in John 3 16 and in many other verses in the bible but this is what Christianity teaches but Islam teaches that Jesus is only a prophet so either one is true or the other and also the assumption that Jesus is only a prophet is completely ridiculous to just mention that because Jesus himself said he's God he's the way the life and the truth and there's two options either he's telling the truth and he's God or he's crazy and he's insane for saying this because if I would be going out and saying that I am God, people would say I'm crazy. They would not say I'm a prophet. 
they would not say I'm a good moral teacher because this is just, uh, yeah, people would just think it's insane. So either he was right and he is God and he came to earth, he performed miracles, he healed people, he died for us. So yeah, there's enough proof that he's God or he's crazy, but not, or he's the devil himself, but not, uh, but not a prophet. And what I know to be true is that he's God, but he did not leave another option. Either he's God or he's insane, <laughs> but not a prophet and not a moral teacher. So this is one thing that, yeah, they just got wrong. But yeah, Islam teaches that Jesus was only a prophet, which is completely wrong and not divine. And both beliefs cannot be true simultaneously because, um, yeah, they just point to something else. So this is how religions exclude each other and they cannot be true. There are a lot of people who says, oh, every religion is true, is true. Whatever you believe in, it's true because all things are true. But if I would tell them that, um, yeah, what I believe, like it, this truth excludes all other things. So there has to be one thing that is truth. It cannot be all things. And the thing is, you can choose whatever you believe in. You're free to choose whatever you believe in. I'm just saying, if you believe in something, stick to that and don't jump around from one thing to another or don't like also, of course, you can change your opinion and you can change your mind, but don't mix things up. Don't go to church and follow Jesus and then go do mantra meditations and have a Buddha in your home because this is contradictory. And again, too many cooks spoil the broth and this is just uh, dangerous. This is just dangerous because there are other doors that you're opening with things like doing mantras and whatever. If you believe in the Jesus, in Jesus, in the God, in the Bible, follow him. But don't go and do other things that don't align with him because he also says in the Bible in Exodus 34, 14, do not worship any other God for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He do not want us to have another God. And in Hinduism, for example, you have millions of gods. You have a lot of gods, but he says he's the only God, like the God in the Bible. So either you worship him or you worship other gods. And as for if you're confused, which religion is true or if nothing is true, go watch the last episode because there I first mentioned why you need more faith to believe that nothing exists than to believe that God exists. And I gave you also proof that Jesus is true and that the Bible is true. Um, but um, again, if you don't, if you want to believe and if you are open to that and if you want to know, yeah, what is truth, then go do your own research. If you now think, well, what is the right thing? Islamism, Judaism or Hinduism or whatever there is or Christianity, then go do your research as if you would be doing when you look for a trainer. Do your research search for evidence, search for client results or for testimonies of people and uh, really, yeah, uh, search for the evidence and see where there is the evidence and the people that can testify that they have been changed. And there have been so many people changed through Jesus. Go watch testimonies, talk to people and listen to what they tell you and also inform yourself on all the other religions because I do not want you to blindly believe what I say. It's not, it's never about that. It's about making your, uh, building your own uh, opinion and making your research. So go do your research and see what religion is the most likely to be true. And also, I recommend you to not rely on your desires and on your wishes and to say, oh, with God in the Bible, there's commandments with, um, 
believing in the universe, I can do whatever I please. So therefore, it's my preference. One thing is your preference, but one, but another thing is the truth. So yeah, do your research. But whatever you believe in, do not mix things up because mixing things up never has a good outcome. Let's continue with point number five. And it is believe in Jesus and starting your fitness journey requires being perfect from the start. I see this in both areas. Often when people, uh, I have had, for example, ex-clients who they came to me, but they said, yeah, well, I'm a beginner. I'm not as experienced. Uh, can I still train with you? And I'm like, of course, especially if you're a beginner, you're in the best place. Uh, and I always recommend to start from the start because if, uh, to start from the start, yeah, to start coaching uh, from the start. Because if you start out by yourself, then you will do things wrong and you will waste a lot of time. And yeah, mm. therefore, just come really as you are. If you have no experience at all, I don't care. I start with you from the point where you are and I will coach you through this. And I know what things I have to do with you if you're a beginner and what things I have to do if you're more advanced. And the same thing, basically, it's with following Jesus. Following Jesus is a lifelong journey of growth and of transformation. And he is patiently, he works with us patiently and he transforms us, transforms us step by step. And in the Bible, in Philippians 1, 6, in the New Testament, it says, And I am certain that God who began the work within, your, within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So you start off with him and you will be perfected in the process and you will get better and better. And uh, you, yeah, you will grow as a person and the work is never done. You will always be learning, also in the fitness area. Um, the only difference is that I cannot make you perfect, but uh, as a trainer. But Jesus someday will come and make you perfect if you have been following him before. So um, yeah, it's but it there. It's like um, you can really like parallel uh, those two things and. Yeah, explain them simultaneously. Also, the pastor at my church, he may he gave us an example and I really resonated and loved this example because it's what I do. He says, um, when you come to Jesus, you come as you are. He takes you as you are. You do not have to be a saint. You do not have to be perfect. You do not have to... If you have things that you're struggling with, if I don't know if you're an alcoholic... It's not that Jesus will not like you because you're an alcoholic or because you're a drug addict. He will take you as you are and he will love you as you are. He loves you just as you are. But he loves you so much that he wants to help you grow. And he, don't, he doesn't want you to stay that way because he knows it's not good for you. And he compared the example with coming to a trainer. And I resonated really because it, because when you come to me, you come because you want to improve your shape, you want to improve your self-esteem. So you're at a point where maybe you have um, 10 kilos to lose or something. But I will not condemn you because you haven't been doing the things that give you your toned body until now. Like I am thrilled to help you and I'm thrilled to take you in the stage that you're at. But... The thing is, and it's the same with when you're coming to Jesus, Jesus will transform you because you are coming to him for a transformation. You are coming to him because you want to be perfected, because you want to be delivered from anxiety, from things, and he wants the best for you. So he will not leave you as you are, because otherwise you wouldn't need him. And it's the same for me as a trainer. If you come to me, you have a goal in mind. And that will help you reach that goal. So it does not mean that I don't think you are great and that I don't like you, but I will make you change habits and change things in your nutrition because this is what will lead you to your ultimate goal of having a toned body, of having a dream shape, of um, getting more self-confidence. So yeah, both 
The examples just blend in together beautifully. You can come as you are, but the goal is to be transformed and it's for your own best and this is why you're coming here. So never think that you have to be perfect to start walking with Jesus. Also never think that you have to be perfect to come for coaching or personal training. And the difference, the big difference, like there is a parallel, but, but the big difference is I'm only a human. I only have my human resources. I have years of experience and I can help you uh, grow in your fitness journey and get your dream body. But there will not be any other better coach out there than Jesus. Jesus is the one who can really transform you in areas in a way that is just insane. He can deliver people from addiction, from anxiety and so much more. And if you blend together your faith and your fitness, those both things, they complement each other and you grow in a way that you will not even recognize yourself a year from now. Also, a few months from now, if you stick consistent with both things, this is going to improve your life quality by millions of times, really. So, yes, um, come as you are. And the journey is step by step. You don't have to have an immediate transformation, not in the fitness journey. And also not in your walk with Jesus. It will be step by step. For example, if you're coming to me, um, according to where you are, I will give you things that you change, habits that you change, and I will give you tasks and you change that thing. And then when you change this and you adapted this, then I will give you the next thing. And then when you adapted this and you still want to keep improving, I will give you the next thing. I will never give you all things at once because you will be overwhelmed and you will give up because it's too much of a change, too much of a transformation in a short time. Remember, you have to change who you are, not who you are in the essence, of course not. But you have to change, you have to let die all parts of your identity. If you're a person who eats sugar all the time, you cannot keep eating sugar all the time in order to get your dream body. So, yeah, it's changing your identity also. You will... Take on the identity of a fit person. And this is what will keep you fit easily. And also, when you're walking with Christ, you will take the identity of Christ step by step. And I can tell you from my experience, it's a step by step process. There are things that back then I would say, how can I, I, I cannot imagine that I could ever change that. And now it's like natural to me. But it came step by step. I changed one thing and then the other thing. And I was, letting, I was letting God just guide me through those things. And if you are starting your walk with Jesus and you heard that this and this thing is not good and, you, and that it's something that you've done until this point that you've really enjoyed. For me, for example, it, would, it was some music that I listened to that was not edifying me and I could not imagine like not listen to it because I grew up with that music and all of that thing, uh, all of those things. But um, one of the most uh, powerful prayers when it comes to this, when you really want to change and you want to grow and something and it seems just like difficult for you is pray to God to change your heart and to align your desires with his desires. So that's the most powerful prayer I did. Align my desires with yours. Open up my heart for you. And he did. And I let go of things so easily, not thinking I have to force myself to let go of those things, but I naturally didn't want to do that. With the fitness journey, it's similar. There's things that you in the beginning cannot imagine letting go of or new habits that you think it's hard to adapt but when you're open to it you will notice how good you feel about them and how your mindset changes and how those things are not hard anymore for you and with that if you combine your fitness journey with your work with Jesus you can also ask him to help you grow in your fitness area and to make habits easy for you he will do all of those things for you I promise you um, and I'm going to give you an example. I had a client and she 
was she wasn't training uh, at all and she started out and she wanted to do like uh, five trainings like people always want to do a lot and I told her start only with two trainings step by step and um, she started with two trainings and she fell in love with it so she included another day and then she was so on fire now she's training four times and then she even started to play tennis but it was from her wish because she did the first step to become more fit and now her whole identity changed so this is what will happen so do not be afraid and do not think that you have to be perfect from the start and do all of the things from the start come as you are and you will be transformed step by step if you have the right coach in the fitness area and if you're walking with God you don't have to worry you just have to search for him every day ask him and you will be transformed so yes this is number this was number five number six is and this goes for fitness and for faith i've had bad experience with fitness and with faith therefore it's not for me this point just makes me so incredibly sad because i've seen it in fitness and i've seen it in the church and the thing is that often we meet the wrong people and we have the wrong examples and then we think everybody is like this and then we have a bad picture of something we have a wrong idea of something and let me start off with fitness so there's people that have had trainers who restricted them a lot and therefore they decide fitness is not for them they give up because those trainers made them train five times a week they make them diet very strictly and um, they got fed up fed up of it and they also even told them this this is the only way to get fit so they give up and then they say fitness is not for me or also people who have not have trainers but um, also the diet industry gives you so many misinformation they tell you that you need to do hit fat burning workouts that you need to go jogging all the time and that you need to do low carb and keto when starving and all of those things and then you try those things and uh, those things exhaust you and then you give up because those things are not sustainable and um, then you think fitness is just not for you so so many women miss out on having a wonderful beautifully shaped body because they were just they just started out with the wrong method they started out with uh yeah the thing that was was just too much and was also not leading them to the goal if you only restrict your calories a lot and you do a lot of cardio you will not get your tone shape and you will be ending up disappointed and in the end giving up and this just makes me so sad and this is why it's my mission to show women that they can get in shape in an easy way fall in love with their training and really also have no restrictions with food literally eat what they want and if they want to have a piece of pizza then they're gonna have or an entire pizza or yeah they can have they can allow themselves things uh foods that they find unhealthy not all the time but uh, there is room for those things and there's no extremes and um also for example me if i would have let myself uh be held back by the bad examples that i had in the uh, past i would not be here right now i would not be talking to you like this i would not be transforming bodies and i would not be helping you getting into your dream shape because i would have given up by now i've had really strict trainers that made me really restrict myself that make uh that just gave me all of the wrong things that made me train too often not eat a lot of things i really started because of that not having control over my uh, hunger and i started binge eating and i started going into a downward spiral because i had bad coaches who taught me the wrong way and um, 
I am only where I am right now in a body that I love because I was determined to look for another way, to look for a sustainable way and I stick to that. I did not let my beliefs being influenced by bad trainers because you have bad examples everywhere, whether it's with fitness coaches, whether it's with doctors, with physiotherapists or whatever, there is good trainers and bad trainers. So do not let yourself hold, uh, yeah, do not let the fact that you had a bad trainer or you tried a bad diet or whatever hold you back from getting your dream body. It's easier than you think. And this is what I'm here for, to teach you that. And the next thing that aligns with that when it comes to faith is that people often say or think, I've had a bad experience at church, therefore I don't want to have God in my life. This is what um, people often say and I totally get it. It's it's, as with the trainer, if you have had a bad experience, you think that this is what represents um, the thing. For example, a bad trainer represents fitness and uh, bad bad experiences represent God. And um, this is just so not true because we human, are imperfect and often like disappointments that you've had with the church they come from humans because we're dealing with humans here and human imperfection doesn't uh, reflect the nature of Jesus Um, he called all of us and he offers us forgiveness and grace and this is who he is he's loving and I know some of you may have bad experiences like uh people in the church judging you and hurting you or maybe you also have the argument in mind that a lot of wars came from religion but those are only people like acting in their ways this is not God's will and this is not God's nature also um yeah a lot of things um I've met people who they were not accepted by people at church and they therefore they did and then they found other people who were not uh, believing in God and they were more loving. Therefore, the conclusion was that uh, God is not loving just because those people were misrepresenting God. And let me tell you one thing. The church is a hospital for the sick. It's not a museum for saints. So in the church, you will have, have flawed people. You will also have people who are further in the faith journey that can be of great example for you and that will give you a great message, but you will also have flawed people. But uh, I encourage you to really learn who God really is by reading in the Bible, by educating yourself, by praying to God because he will talk to you and get to know who he really is. And don't rely on the bad example that other people give you. Because this is not who God is. The message of God is love. I've also had, um, was talking to a girl and she's a little bit against um, the church. Because she was, uh, she was a child only and she had a religion class. And they made them, and she was really a little, see the crucifixion of Jesus with all the details. And this was, of course, disturbing because this is brutal. And they were showing this to children. And of course, she has a bad image because this is kind of a trauma, but this is made by people and not by God. So, yes, so uh, I really invite you, if you have bad, have had bad experience with the church, to really reflect Was it people that were misrepresenting God? If yes, give it a chance. Give God a chance. Learn to know who he really is. And also be open to look for another church. To go to receive the message. That's how I started out. When I went to started to go to church, I was afraid that people would be judgy and everything. But I was open and I've had so many blessings from learning in the church from getting to know people in the church and I've really met wonderful people and of course not everybody's perfect and there are also people who are not representing that but um, 
representing God well, but so are we. Often we are not representing God well when we have resentment again, when we gossip about people. That's not representing God well. So also learn to have compassion with people and yeah, to really know that God is not the bad example of people. The message of God is love and the fruits of the Spirit are actually very crown of the Holy Spirit, which I have here. The Holy Spirit that you get when you accept Jesus and when you listen to him and take your time to listen to him are actually very contrary to a lot of negative examples a lot of people have had, like judgment and um, all of those things. I'm going to read you the fruits again. They're here, but the fruits of the Spirit... But the fruit of the Spirit, it's one fruit, but it's all of those characteristics in one fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So do you think gossiping and judging people and wars align with those fruits? They do not. So really what you often see in people, it's not what God really represents. Get to know him for who he is. And therefore, we finished all of the six points and misconceptions uh, about fitness and faith. With those misconceptions out of the way, I hope that I gave you a direction to start your journey or to keep going in your, on your journey with a much easier approach and with an approach that gives you just much more peace and that yeah really leads you on the right path and helps you stay there if you have any question again you can message me because yeah those are really deep topics um but otherwise um yeah also give me feedback if you love this podcast of course and i will see you in the next episode bye bye